Hi, I'm Anna. I'm Ben. We're obviously welcome to our channel. Today we're watching Madoka Magica, season one, episode seven. <sighs> we learned something new last episode. A lot of us learned something new. The only people who didn't is Cube and Homer, and that's if we're outside of a range that's about a hundred meters of our soul gem. Our bodies it, it, it doesn't have a soul in it. We are not we anymore. Right. We are not as human as we had possibly perceived ourselves to be. Our bodies are just external hardware at this point. I hope that Sayak is fine. Like, that there's no repercussion. Soul Gem's back. She should be picking right up where she left off, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Right. I, yes. I think all we needed to come out of last episode with was now... The Everyone is kind of on the same page of information, and Kyoko is maybe less of a threat now. I wonder if, you know, witches are, like, know this information and, and would try to use it against us, like, and separate us from our soul gem How as quick as possible. How intelligent are witches, uh, right? Or Walpurgishnat, whatever that is, coming to fruition. Yeah. <laughs> Does that have any knowledge or correlation to the information that we just learned? I don't know. I'm really excited, but I hated the end of the last episode in terms of Sayaka, so. And Madoka. I mean, Madoka having that scene with her mom getting that advice, <sighs> her deciding to such make a, great a mistake episode. on behalf of her friend, and then that mistake ends up removing her friend's soul from her body, what being do you, flung onto a truck. What will Sayaka's next words be to Madoka? That's my right. biggest, like... I think you did leave last episode wondering how Sayaka would feel yeah. about Madoka's actions. You ready? Yeah. Sweet. What a cool shot. Sayaka. Mm. <laughs> なんで教えてくれなかったのよ。聞かれなかったからさ。知らなければ知らないままで何の不都合もないからね。事実。あのまみでさえ最後まで。わあ。そこは神経細胞の集まりでしかないし、そこは循環器系の中枢があるだけだ
であることに違いはないわ不可能を可能にしたんだから三木さやかが一生を費やして介護してもあの少年が再び演奏できるようになる日は来なかった奇跡はね本当なら人の命でさえあがなえるものじゃないのよそれを売って歩いているのがあいつさやかちゃんが魔法少女じゃなかったらあの時私もひとみちゃんも死んでたの感謝と責任を混同してはダメよほうあなたには彼女を救う手立てなんてない小村ちゃんどうしていつも冷たいの She's been trying to save people for so long and they never listen. I don't All the chairs are on her bed, too. I don't know what to do. I don't know Oh my god, Kyoko. Why? She has so many apples. There was like at least 12. Look at that fountain. からを手に入れたから突き勝ちできてるわけだし、後悔するほどのことでもないってね。あんたは自業自得なだけでしょ。自分のために崖生きてれば何もかも自分のせいだ。誰を恨むこともないし、後悔なんてあるわけがない。そ
人のために祈ったことを後悔してないその気持ちを嘘にしないためにも後悔だけはしないって決めたのこれからも私はね高すぎるものを支払ったなんて思ってない That's what she thought before dad went crazy そのリンゴはどうやって手に入れたのなら私そのリンゴは食べられない Get what you pay for バカ野郎私たちは魔法少女なんだぞ他に同類なんていないんだぞ私は私のやり方で戦い続けるよそれがあんたの邪魔になるなら前みたいに殺しに来ればいい私は負けないしもう恨んだりもしないよ I have never seen someone eat an apple so angrily. Usually people are happy when they eat an apple. Understandably. Wow. He was returning to school. She said she'd never regret it, but... ことたんじゃリハビリにならないしね。来週。それで話って何？恋の相談ですわ。私ね、前から彩香さんや窓香さんに秘密にしてきたことがあるんです。ずっと前から。私。上条京介くんのことお伝えしてましたの。そうなんだ。No way. That or she's testing her. That or she's trying to get her to admit it. This would have happened before. 本当にそれだけ。私決めたんですの。もう自分に嘘。あ、she's just trust. She's working. She's working her right now. So you want to regret? Holy shit! I cannot believe that just happened. <laughs> I don't believe it. Sayaka-san, <laughs> The Sayaka tell Madoka. Oh my god. What if she hadn't seen? Holy shit. Kyoko wants her to survive. Cool shot. Oh my god. This is amazing! Whoa! Almost feels like an altar. It almost feels religious. Woo! Uh, 
からもう突っ込んでなよ手本を見せてやるからさおい邪魔しないで一人でやれるわあんたまさか。Like, I don't care if I get scraped up now. The pain. <laughs> Kyube recommended not detaching yourself. Physical pain or emotional pain, right? Okay, that was Madoka Magica season one, episode seven. The whole please stop. My head immediately goes just Madoka not being able to watch Sayaka letting her body be like torn apart mm -hmm. because of the fact that she can't feel pain. That isn't knowledge that uh, just on that point to think about how Madoka would be feeling in that instance even more she was not a part of the conversation in terms of the pain uh in terms of being spared the physical pain we are just with sayaka and kube when we are learning about that mm -hmm. and as kube has said at the beginning of this episode they don't tell people things unless people ask because they don't understand why you would need to know all that other stuff. They mm -hmm. don't offer it up just immediately and freely. It's only prompted that they will tell you about these things. It's like, it it goes to show what we hear like later in the episode of like Cube and like not understanding human values. You can't comprehend human values, which is something that we left episode six talking a lot about feeling very strongly about because of obviously the ending of last episode being us all finding out this information that makes them seem like zombies and not actually not human anymore i adore like in the the sick fucked up sense of there being a character in the role of cube with the mentality of cube like it's awful and fucked up but for him as a character like having this like like cold like it doesn't make sense to me like it like this alien like mindset i find it, it refreshing it's so interesting i feel like it's it's really refreshing and interesting to have a character be written in a way that the person that wrote it had to literally drop like identify within themselves how do i remove all of the human aspects from this character yeah how do i uh, create lines of dialogue and ways of thinking where I literally extract every ounce of I'm a human writing this so what I write when it's a character is going to be so intertwined with what it's like the experience of being human mm -hmm. and we've seen it a few times I would say recently attempts at writing characters that are supposed to lack humanity and it is so fun as a viewer to watch because it's this I feel like there's this conflicting feeling within me when I watch creatures and characters that are supposed to be other than human and lacking those human qualities where I'm like, oh, that's so effed up that they just said that. But I get why they said it because they don't attach themselves in that way. Yeah. They don't have the sentimentality, the empathy, you know? And it almost gives them like a get away free card, get out of jail free card and Monopoly, mm. where they're a little more excusable because you can't uh, judge them by the rules of human society. Yeah, it, it but it, like in this case specifically, it's like such a cool idea, like, and, and how they execute it, but like what it does to these other characters, like obviously the easiest, like, to call upon are the three who didn't know about this but especially homura like homura's character is one that has before the show started knew kube was like this and it's such a fascinating take like to go back in my mind and try to imagine re-watching the scene of homura chasing down kube with that knowledge in mind you know mm -hmm. so interesting
That um, makes me want to get into Homura and Madoka's conversation, but I feel like we aren't there yet. Ready to get into that because yeah. chronological. So well, yeah, because because uh, uh, specifically with this show, there's so much that upon editing, I find that we want to talk about like visual concepts that they have attempted to do and 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 blown our minds with, right? And with that. It's easier to go chronologically and, you know, uh, show the moments that we're trying to refer to. Like, a minute in. A minute. I'm blown away by this shot. It's Sayaka, like, hands on a chair with Kubei in front of her with a mirror behind Kubei. Now. Interesting posing for a How one. perspective is so difficult to draw. How the fuck do you draw the reflection of Sayaka in the mirror? Like, how do you sit down and you're like, oh, I got this first attempt. E-. I Like, it. it's so incredible. It's like such a great detail that the, the how flat it is. If I was trying to achieve that look, I, as I am not like super well studied in illustration or anything, but if I were to try to, if you were like, Anna, I want you to make a shot like this, I would call upon different things. I would either get a reference photo of a mirror tilted in that way, have a real person lean over a table in front of it, or I would draw Sayaka's face on a piece of paper and tilt the piece of paper mm. at the reflection angle and then like draw what that looks like. You know what I would do? I would... uh. I would draw I would draw it first. I'd draw the mirror and then I'd draw what her reflection would be on the mirror and then I'd finish the rest of the scene. Like I'd I'd go from it in that direction because like what you can tell that the perspective is perfect on it because at the top of the mirror you can see like the angle in which it's pointing to and the line and that's the same line that they're following for the angle and perspective of the face. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like if you drew just that mirror and nothing else in the scene, and then you have to draw a face on it, it with the mirror already drawn in that perspective. I, you know what I mean. But then you would have to invent where Sayaka is in the room what, out of just pure. Uh, if you if you worked thought, backwards though, and you started with the mirror, then drew the perspective, you wouldn't be inventing it because it would have already it would already tell you. You'd draw her around what's already there. To me, that sounds much more complicated, but, but we do so think good. differently. Like, and then uh, a couple seconds later, we get, like, two more great shots of it, of just, like, a different angle of Sayaka, like, moving away, and it just coming away from the mirror just a little bit, and it's so fascinating. I love this show so much, man. Okay, um, I wanted to also talk about when they brought up, like, what this pain is idea is and that mommy didn't even know right. all about it fucking Cubase like here i'll show you like and just touches the soul gem which causes sayaka to feel yeah. what that pain would actually feel like without the limiter being removed of of you know that pain mm -hmm. and Cube at first before doing this brings up it, it sort of tries to paint this picture to sayaka like what if you were literally stabbed through with a witch that has a spear and we get brought back in this moment to the fight with Kyoko and how there was no, like, Sayaka was still fighting. The only, yes, there was healing happening, but there was no reaction to the physical pain that was being put upon her, which as viewers, it's so fun to hear this because then you think back and you're like, yeah, some of that stuff probably really, I remember there was a scene in that fight where she gets pushed up against the wall mm -hmm. and then like, you know, really hard. And we were like, ooh, you know, yeah. like that looks like it hurt. And now we're like, of course she didn't react like it really hurt. And she just got back up and was fighting because the pain was literally like reduced. Yeah. She it would, wasn't completely gone, but it was reduced. She wasn't a, she would not have been able to live through the fight. And I love it too because in how I'd imagine other magical girl animes are, but even just like fighting animes, it's like, okay. You've been gifted this ability or power. It's magic. Therefore, you can withstand more. Mm -hmm. But the idea that they've taken it and really expanded and 
explained it with this twisted side to it and this how it incorporates with the soul gem and the soul and it being used as what was the uh terminology we got at the end of last episode of the body exterior, exterior hardware. hardware it like really like hones in on what that would mean and i love it i think it's also pointing a finger at a lot of other anime that has fighting and action in it because you never actually the viewer might be like oh that looks like it hurt but you hardly ever really feel like a character is in pain yeah like physical pain i can think of one show that we're currently watching where it's probably the most i've ever felt like a character was in pain and that's free zero mm. uh like there's probably other examples but like magical girl shows especially you never really feel like the character is in a lot of pain because that's really not the point you're supposed to see more of that shot of them being scraped up and getting back up and returning to the fight and it's much more emotionally focused of like the yes you're you're broken down and you're on the floor you're scraped up but you still get up and it's much more focused on just the idea of like strength within yourself yeah uh and i feel like physical pain is something that isn't shown as often where you really can tell that this person's like fighting through actual pain mm -hmm. in order to do this i feel like uh my Hero Academia, a show like that, they actually show you visually an injury, specifically with the main character, that I think helps kind of push that idea of pain. But I, I think that this was almost like a comment at that. Like, like how it, what do you mean? I think it's a comment and not just Magical Girl, magical girl anime, but action anime in general, mm. that it is hard and convey. maybe not always done to really try to drive home or convey to a viewer that this is physically painful and hard for the person to be like continuing yeah. with the fight. I feel like when I see it, it's much more focused on willpower and bringing yourself to get back up and continue True. fighting. Then this is really freaking hurting. You. Gotcha. I'm I, man. I'm really scared for Sayaka. Like I'm terrified. Like these lines. Once you get better at it, you can even detach yourself enough to block out all sense of pain. That said, it causes your body to respond slower when you command it to move. Is that not being like, well, she's trying to lean more into it by the end of the episode? Is it gonna be inevitable that she's not gonna be able to respond as quick as she would have been? Right. And the other issue it does is it's so cool. While it's so human to feel physical pain when something is done to you, it is also human to feel emotional yeah. pain. And when we are detaching from all pain, we are detaching from both the physical and the emotional. And that makes you more of a robot zombie. and not a human and a zombie. I, I love... Self-fulfilling prophecy. That there's this, like, science and rule to it, though. Like, that it's not just, oh, yeah, once you get better at doing this, you'll feel less pain. But there's, like, a give and a take there. Because if you lean into it too much, there's a repercussion. I really love that. Just another reason I love the show. Um, And talking about reasons I love the show, I have got to get your take on what's going on with their desks. So... These desks start out in the floor. Definitely. And then, upon needing to be sat in, they... Fold out of the floor. Fold out of the floor. Now, here's the, here's the thing. Later in the episode, we get a shot of the class once, Kam once Kamijo shows up. People aren't sitting in their chairs, like all of them. Yet, the chairs are still up. Is it like... My my working theory right now is upon entrance into the school, whether there's like a visual identification from a camera or like a pass that you need to scan in, and the second that your attendance being in the school is noted is when your chair your would come seat up. activates. Yeah. I like that idea because it's a more visual way to take like for sure attendance. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you know, what if so-and-so is in the bathroom during attendance? Well, you would know for sure if they were in the building, if their desk was up. I like that idea. I was thinking it was like a button on the floor that they pushed with their foot and then the desk came up. But I like that, the idea that you'd be able to, there's a more visual impact yeah. to someone being out or missing from school. Man, that's so wild. Like, you know, when, when you were in school, did you get those like, how often did you switch seats? Uh, 
Because, like, in, in my school, of course, like, like, there were assigned seats. And then at the end of every so often, we'd be given new seats. I, I feel like uh, it was probably a halfway through the semester type situation. This would have to be less frequent because of the undertaking, I imagine. Right. Reassigning seats to people. I do have one be. thing to bring up, though, with your theory about how it activates. Okay. That would be mommy. So everyone's supposed to forget, like, mommy's supposed to be forever missing. Uh, Does that mean that mommy's seat just is forever stuck into the floor until they, uh, like, t erase her name from, like, the student body list of who I, it I is think, in attendance? Well, like, the dialogue we were given, it will take a long time before people even realize that, like, mommy's missing to the extent that she is. Mm -hmm. So I think that in her classroom, that seat's just been down since she's dead. It's crazy. Also, you know what else is crazy? What? Everyone has tons of freaking chairs in their bedrooms. <sighs> but like, I wonder if it's like a power scaling thing. Like, oh, like she only has three, three chairs. Right. We're looking at uh Sayaka's room right now from like a bird's eye view, and there's three chairs. Might I say two? And one of them is an ottoman. That's something That's of fair. note. Interesting though, right? Yeah, that's just the calling card, I guess. I wonder if the writer of Madoka Magica has written any other series and if this is something that is a through line. Like, a, it's like their calling card, their signature, is that there are scenes, that maybe the landscape, the architecture is similar across universes that they create and or the choice to put lots of chairs around beds. I don't know, because it seems like it's somewhat attached to this story and similar ideas like i wanted to talk about it later on but i'll bring it up now kyoko had so many apples like there was there was a ton of them and i was really curious as to where she's getting all these fucking apples and sayaka being the great perfect character she is almost got me the answer she brought up like where the fuck did you get those apples did you pay for them where are you making money and i'm like She's asking the questions, the real, like, next episode, she's going to be like, where the fuck these shares come from? But then Kyoko just, like, ignores it and doesn't even tell me where she got the apples. I mean, they're literally, like, middle schoolers. They're, they're children. It's not like they could have a part-time job. They're just supposed to live forever doing a job nightly, but they're getting paid in, in not money. Hmm. Yeah. You want to talk about what the value of a miracle is? Yes. Is this um, Homer and Madoka's conversation? On in the truth, roof? the value of a miracle is far greater than that of an entire human life. That was a yes, crazy I, line. I did break down part of that line. That's, and what was the line after? And it is that which that creature, creature sells. sells. Oh, Homer is so cool. But I like the idea of what that miracle is, though. Like, I, I, it completely makes sense to me in how Homer is referring to it in comparison to a human life because it defies, like, logic. It defies mm -hmm. a human life. I, I really liked that Homer kind of specified, it felt like it was for us, for the most part, that Kamijo would not have been able to play ever again. Yep. That what this, what the wishes are, are for things that are impossible other than with magic. Yeah. I, I agree because it, it, it definitely sets it apart from something like, oh, Sayaka jumped on this too early or was rash. No, it, there, it wouldn't have been possible without this. Um, and in Madoka saying like, if she wouldn't have become a magical girl, both Hitomi and I would have died, which is a great through line to later, in the, later in the episode. Don't confuse gratitude with responsibility. That's such an interesting line. I think we get more chairs in a little bit too. No, no we just get the same chairs oh, gotcha. in the same room. Hmm. What do you think of Kyoko's whole backstory? I think that her backstory is super important to set up what happens with Hitomi later in the episode. This idea that Sayaka's like, there's no way I'll regret this thing. And that's like her parting words to Kyoko is like, we are different. I'm not going to go about things the same way as you. I don't have any regrets. But the issue is she's talking to someone 
who felt that they wouldn't, but then the person that they made the wish for, they lost their whole family and their father's love, the person that they made the wish for. That took years in the making, maybe even, for there to be a fall from no regrets to like, oh my god, my whole family's dead and my dad has called me a witch who taints hearts. And then kills the entire family. Yes. And And so it's like, Sayaka, you are saying this from a place that is not the same as Kyoko. You and Kyoko are not in the same position right now. You are newly made to this wish Kamicho has just regained this ability, and that's why it it really feels good. By the end of the episode, she starts to realize she has not actually seen where this could go. Where Kamijo being back in school and not injured anymore, where that actually goes. Other than does this is this what he wants for himself? Or does this remove him further away from her from her? And is that something that she's okay with? Yeah. Because before, she was able to go visit him every day. He was almost like a captive of sorts in terms of friendship. And now she has to share him with everyone. Like, comparing somebody who heeds everybody's warnings to somebody who is going to learn them for themselves. Like, whether it's from Homura or Kyoko, Sayaka hearing Kyoko's story, like, she, like, gets to the bottom of, like, why are you doing this? Why are you saying this? You get the similarities between us, but nah, like I'm going to, I'm going to do it my way. You know, I believe in my way. It's very human Mm -hmm. and understanding why like like Sayaka, it's in a perfect, in a perfect world, Sayaka understands what's happening right now with Kyoko. And it's like, okay, you know what? I don't know what could happen today, tomorrow, or a year from now based on my wish. But because of Sayaka's like belief in it, is like, I, 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 I love her as a character because it's consistent, you know? Right. I think uh, she's very, I think, I think we got Homura and Madoka talking uh, maybe last episode when they had their little meeting at some type of cafe about how Sayaka is the like type of magical girl that is not going to survive based on how like justice seeking and idealistic they are. Mm-hmm. And We're having Sayaka, like, say something super beautiful and ideal that is she is going to ensure that her wish is always uh, a positive and that that she will not have any regrets. And how quickly things are able to turn and crumble brings about both her age and the fact that she hasn't truly been able to sit and think about what all of the consequences would be and what she is willing to like justify what she's willing to be okay with. She never once thinks about the idea of like Kyoko brings up. I did this without knowing what my dad wanted. Mm -hmm. She also doesn't know what Kamijo wants. She just believed she knew what he would want. And then she goes into, into school and now she's suddenly jealous seeing him surrounded by other classmates. She doesn't know how to interact with him anymore. And then he told me. I, I love the theme that it's like, even in the moment, if you feel like you're doing your due diligence, thinking of all the possibilities and then making a decision from there, you you don't have all, you never have all the information of what's to come. She really went, he gets healed. He can play violin and then stopped. There was no, but then he returns to school and then, you know, uh, what, but what comes next for him? I, I think there might have been like, there's that, but it's just like thinking that that might happen and being okay with it, it's way different than actually being in the situation, yeah. especially when you don't like the real surprise is I think that Sayak is like, okay, he heal him, violin, back to school, happy, normal life, not back to school, normal life, he told me, like, reveals her love. Right, I, like, I feel like both of these characters, Kyoko and Sayaka, are probably the most realistic Realistic to if this power was offered to a random person in the real world. Mm. Like, I, no one, except for rare people that I am jealous of, actually do their due, gil- like due diligence when they're, like, making decisions and thinking about the consequences that will come from their actions that far ahead. You know, if they see someone hurt in front of them, they're going to be like, okay, I'm going to help that person. I'm going to save that person. They wouldn't think that 
the next step, something bad would happen. How special do you think Madoka is in terms of like, in in what they're teaching us and showing us really are get leaves me to the conclusion or leads me to the conclusion of like, oh shit, Madoka shouldn't become a magical girl because her end wouldn't be like she she would meet her end. But is Madoka so special that she circumvents that and overcomes it? Or is it like, it, do you believe that to be the case as well? I would say Madoka would be the magical girl to end all magical girl suffering. Hmm. But is that the world we live in? in? Like in Madoka Magica, you know? Maybe she's so thought of as so special. She can make anything that's impossible possible with a wish. As long as she makes a specific wish and is willing to deal with the consequences of it, we get the person that she is having the most kind of growth with and learning with being Homura, a person who's been trying to stop so many girls from going down this path of being magical girls, but also trying to rescue them after they've already become magical girls yeah. by telling them the truths of their limits and who they, what they really are and not a person anymore as much as they had thought they were. I think that their friendship together and what what Homura has been fighting for and then what Madoka could end up doing with whatever wish she wanted to make yeah. could end up being the perfect recipe to just ridding the reason for needing magical girls and mm. magic in this world. Hmm. I really liked uh, a shot we were shown of another reflection shot. I hate that that's just like a thing about that me. You just the... love reflection shots. I just they're so cool. They're so impressive. Well, not all reflection of them. Reflection shot. Not all of them are like equally as cool. There's definitely like, oh yeah, that whatever. But this like, was one of my favorites. I would I, say. I I think I preferred the mirror one, but I definitely wanted to like be like, oh yo, Sayaka is looking at herself in an apple right now. That's crazy. Is um, it true that apples are covered in wax? Huh. Is it true that, like, when we buy an apple at the supermarket, it's covered in wax? I... To, like, keep it all, like, nice and shiny and perfect? I'm looking it up. <laughs> He's I... looking it up. <laughs> okay. So, apples naturally have their own wax that is a means of protecting them. But after they're picked and washed most of that protective coating comes off so in turn the food producers recoat the fruits with a food grade wax hmm it's often an emulsion made with carnauba wax or chalak or beeswax that's weird and all i know is i always i can't eat like the in apple just like just like how they're doing in this show. Like I always had to peel the skin off. I cannot stand apple skin. I love apple skin. I can't stand it. Because of the wax? or I, That might be why. When did it start? Before or after you learned the information of the apple wax? Since I was a small child. So you probably didn't know that. That I don't think I knew. I... But maybe that's why it's so reflective, is that these apples, uh, it just even naturally are waxy, giving a nice, you know, surface for a, reflex, a reflection shot of Sayaka. Yeah. I will say I am enjoying Kyoko. Really? She has so many apples, man. Wow. Just because of the apples and that she has so many and enough to share, then you're like... No, not, like not that she wouldn't share if, unless it was like prominent to the point that she was making. But I loved the way that they that they conveyed the story of of her past. There was like this mixed medium of like the stick figures and like her really holding them and that. stuff. That was such a great idea because like it's not only... And, and sometimes, uh, now that I put my phone on airplane, uh, off airplane mode to look up the Apple thing, I got a notification. But um, it's not only like, okay, we often see in shows, like whether it's a different art style or like a rock form medium or something creative to show an instance of like a legend or the past or a story. I think it's so fascinating to, when you're telling a story, to be able to show it as in like, this character drawn this way is the person holding these things from you know 
So cool. I think maybe there's a crossover of people who would, in terms of artistic choices, there is probably a crossover of people who enjoy Madoka Magica to people that enjoyed Bochi the Rock. Interesting. Just in terms of creative choices, animation, different kind of medium styles. It gives much different feelings than Bochi the Rock, but... <laughs> Very different I get your in point. theme, but just in terms of creative, looking at, at it through a creative lens. He called me his own daughter, a witch who tainted people's hearts. Isn't that hilarious? After I've been hunting real witches every night. Man, I, I really did uh, like Kyoko's backstory in terms of, like, who she is currently but also what her thought process was to make this wish in the first place i didn't expect like okay the idea of her making a wish for somebody else was on the table but with the reasoning she did i thought was like it, it's very innocent and pure in yeah. of itself like i want i think my dad has a good message and he's only being ridiculed nobody's listening to him yeah too. he's excommunicated because he's not preaching exactly what the bible or the gospel itself was saying and i think i believe in him only if these people would give him a chance to hear and then the dad's response to learning about this shit which is crazy in of itself being like like being what it was was so fascinating and fucked up and twisted but you can kind of see how like the dad begins to go crazy a little bit like oh shit how am i supposed to believe if any of the people around me are talking to me because of me or because of this witch, and then he goes down this fucking horrific rabbit hole of murdering his entire right. fucking family. It's Jesus. because he finds out that this just wasn't God's plan. This wasn't just real life that he had good words and people were finally listening to it. It's in same line of thinking for Kami Joe. What if what happens to Kami Joe if he learns that the reason he was able to regain use of his hand is because someone made a wish. Yeah. It, it, it That's the point that causes the possible issues within the person that you made a wish for. Not them living with the uh, repercussions or the positive repercussions of your wish, which is for them. It's them finding out that that wasn't just the natural faded way of things. Mm -hmm. That this was something that someone else planted and created for them the the difference between gratitude and responsibility that same like line from homura with to madoka about sayaka saving her and hitomi like they're very different situations between sayaka and kyoko and what their wishes were for but mm -hmm. like you can see the bridge that kyoko was trying to build and out of like fear of the path sayaka is going down and she hasn't failed to want to Sayaka leaving in that scene out of the broken down church did not, uh, wasn't an end all be all for Kyoko to want to be involved at possibly helping Sayaka. And she's kind of being put in this position that's similar to Homura of like, we get her initially introduced in the story as being competitive, being the definition of magical girls aren't supposed to get along with other magical girls. Mm. She is that for us. She's going to fight over territory but now she's also watching over and she's also wanting to relate and save. I think like I, I've, I've never wanted to angrily bite into something, but I think that if you have to angrily bite into something, It'd be an the apple, apple would It'd be It'd 100% be an thing. apple. I, I didn't think about that because it's like- a cr The crunch. The part that you don't like. The part that the I don't wax. like. The wax. I feel like if you removed it and still bit into an apple, there would still be somewhat of a nice appealing sound. I don't like the sound that much. It wouldn't be as much. crunchy and crisp. I don't like the sound that much. I don't like people. I don't like listening on. to people eat though. That's fair. But I just think it, like of it as like an idea and like that anger and then that snap. It would fits perfectly for an apple. Hmm. Um. You, I believed you for a second that he to me was only saying this to like get Sayaka to you know confess I her love. It. I believed it for a bit because of the fact that it started with Hitomi looking at Sayaka's face. And I was like, oh, she's doing a thing here. And the tense music is oh, just she to did throw me off. And she's trying to convince 
Uh, the, do you want to know the moment that I stopped believing that she was just doing something in order to push Sayaka to confront her feelings? Can I make a guess first? Yeah, make a guess. Uh, the ultimatum. The timing ultimatum. Yeah. That is the moment I believed her. Because I was like, no real friend who's looking out for you and trying to push you to admit your true feelings is going to give you a time ultimatum to do so. Yeah. It's, it's a day. A day. <laughs> That's just not, that's not something that's nice. Bro just real. got back to school. And he literally he, just got back to school and you're going to make her confess. Like 5,000 other girls are going to be lining up behind the school buildings confessing to him. He does not need this right now. He just got back. That's, that's the crazy. moment that I knew that I was living in some rose colored glasses world where she was just being a good friend. I can't believe, like, I am so happy that we're watching a show that does this kind of shit. The same episode, the same fucking episode. Sayak is like, I had a moment today. I had a moment today where I almost regretted something. And then she starts crying for just a split second. I thought if only I haven't saved Hitomi that time, I completely fail at being an ally of justice. How will I ever face mommy? Like I showing that crack and that break in your own, like meant your own system that you've created for your morality and how it affects you is so fascinating. It, I'm so happy that they showed that through, it through Sayaka. This line of how will I ever face mommy brings us back to the moment that mommy was so harsh with her being like, are you sure you're, you would do this not to have him love you back? Mm -hmm. But in this same conversation with Madoka outside, Sayaka brings up that she's going to lose him to Hitomi, to lose someone they have had to been yours to begin with. Mm -hmm. And then she even goes on to like, she's, Talking like she could have had a chance until she found out she's already dead. I wanted that to line, read, uh, yeah. Because there's the it's so emotional, but so like it gives such an insight of how Sayaka really thinks. How she really was thinking, yes. There's nothing I can do. I'm going to lose him because I'm already dead. Because I'm a zombie. I can't ask him to hold me when I have a body like this. I can't ever ask him to kiss me. damn like it it i don't think that i could have without her saying in such explicit specific wordage i don't think i would have ever put that upon her like i i in trying to think about a, how a character in this universe would feel after the revelation i feel like i'd be giving a character too much credit if i was like oh yeah they're probably like considering what they even feel comfortable doing or feel right doing with their own body and relate, you know, because of their age and everything like that. I don't think I would have like gone that extra mile of thought and I'm just astounded that it exists. Mm -hmm. Um, because of now I completely forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Um, but I, I, Really, I again, Sayak is, I think, my favorite character in the show by far, but only because of, like, the emotional, like, stretching her character is being forced to, like, to do on screen for me. Even, like, her perspective of what life is because of having such an intimate relationship uh, with Kami Joe and, like, knowing what pain is and how, like, people have it worse to be like snowballed into this and then after last episode losing her soul like god she she's putting she's being put through a lot yeah. but they are doing it fantastically they're definitely continuing to paint her as a character that desires an ideal but and believes in themselves that they are trying to achieve that ideal while ignoring uh the parts of them that are more human and not uh fitting that ideal uh because if you love someone, you can never truly erase those feelings from the decision that she makes, this ideal that she's doing this for him, for mm -hmm. him to be able to play the violin again. She can't actually do that and make that wish for him with erasing that she loves him. Yeah. And with the love for him comes the hope that he's happy, comes the hope that she can still love him and maybe they can still be together in the future. Because if you love someone, you do 
want them to want to be with you in the future. You're not going to be able to eradicate that self, that like that idea from yourself. It to me, it's like it. Compl- I love the pacing of the show. Like I, I love that we got not only the conversation with Hitomi, not only Sayaka talking to Madoka this way, but then it's again reinforced by she is like outwardly expressing her loss of humanity and how she views herself now, which then results immediately after with her doing crazy shit about pushing what she's capable of doing and not feeling anything. Yeah. She embraces See here, she's crying to us. So good. About the loss of humanity, about being a zombie. And then she literally just takes it and runs with it. Well, if I'm a zombie, then I have to embrace that I'm a zombie. And you know what the plus is of being a zombie? Not yep. having to feel pain. Yep. And again, shout out to Kyoko because when Kyoko went out of her way to tell this fucking horrific story in the place that inspired your wish, you, you get met with a response from Sayaka that is basically like, that could be taken in a way that the way you are going about your own life after this tragedy is incorrect or wrong or less than. And then Kyoko still shows up. There's still that, yeah, definitely. I think that fits with the idea of, like, Sayaka tries to portray herself or live by an ideal when actually in this in the instance with Kyoko, it's almost like a little bit rude. Like, I am better than and I will live my life better than what you are doing. Like, yeah, it's not great that Kyoko didn't pay for those apples, but you are putting yourself above this person in terms of how they handled trauma. Yeah. Man, the fighting sequence at the end of this episode might have been my favorite action sequence in the entire Just show. All blacked out. But... I so could probably be wrong because there's been so many that I love. I think it was so cool. And I, I'm so glad they kept it going upon Kyoko's entrance. Like, I love the outline for each of their color schemes, right? That's great. But just the dynamic motion and us being able to immediately tell who it Kyoko is. is with the Pocky sticking out of her mouth. I It's so fucking cool, man. I love when you can tell who you can a see character the, is and the character design just based from a on silhouette. silhouette. Do you see the blood from Sayaka yeah. being redded on her black silhouette yeah. there? That really conveys the damage that she's going through. And is she actually kind of almost tells Kyoko to get out of the way and then charges forward and then really gets caught up you see that blood the bloodlines even more there was a religious aspect to this witch in terms of like how the landscape looked and almost this like it gives me statue of liberty oh okay i get it kind of does look like the flame i was getting very like the witches at the altar as being the person preaching to the the Mm. organized uh, group of people that were there stained glasses ahead what a what, a, what an incredible sequence. And then she just keeps whacking at it again and again. If I just detach myself, then she smiles. I really don't feel any pain. I was scared when, like, those hands grabbed her before she did another strike that she was going to get, like, torn apart. Me too, but you know what I just thought on rewatch of that? Hmm. The hands grabbing her mirrors... Kyoko's response to her when she throws the apple on the ground. That was the Kyoko's knight reaching out of the hand was the apple throw. Then that moment. And then here Kyoko comes in again. Sayaka denies the help. And she's again being grasped by like her clothes and her neckline. Interesting. Everything in Madoka Magica there is like interconnected like especially like episode by episode there are choreography through lines there are visual through lines from things that make more sense and mirror i think most of the time it's like a mirror like there's one instance of something at the beginning of the episode and then another instance of it later in the episode it's it's almost as if like each episode has its own theme yeah that they're like real but it's not just like theme in like how you typically have it like okay we're going to go out of our way and focus on the importance of betrayal no, they do it with all aspects of the show wh- whether artistically or yeah. not it, it's like with amazing. that it's choreography yeah with that it's it's slightly narrative but it's also choreography it's okay a character reaches their hand out to you whether physically or 
through words or through just what's a what's a figurative no i my brain is flunking on me right now probably because you don't eat enough apples it's probably because i don't eat enough apples and maybe haven't hydrated enough today and so my brain wants to stop working (laughs) but (laughs) there is a reaching out of the hand and then a denial from sayaka both times and then the same kind of choreography of what then happens to her that that denial from her is not met with no consequences it is met with consequences of her actions i knew someone in high school who like didn't know you weren't supposed to eat the core of the apple they thought that like you could eat it all just not the stem itself so i was sitting at lunch one day and they were eating an apple and like they were holding it by the stem like eating like like they ate it like you know kyoko did and all that's left is that core and it's really thin and then they held the stem up and ate it to the stem why would they want to i can't imagine i don't think it would taste amazing no but it's like when you go to like a restaurant and someone starts eating like the whole edamame oh and not just (laughs) like the whole shell I knew people that did that. God, I'm so sorry. Man, that heat to me thing is gonna, is gonna stay in my head until next time I watch the show. Is there any sort of prediction though for how we're going to dismount or go into a next episode from where Sayaka currently is in her mental state? Uh, into Kami Joe and Hitomi confessing to Kami Joe at the end of tomorrow. I don't want to think about it because I feel like Sayaka might die, and I feel like, or I feel like she might be overtly cold to other people coming out of this, and I don't like that. I would worry that she would ruin her ch- her she when someone uh is acting in this way. You could think that they will ruin their own chance. Yeah, that she will be her own worst enemy here that the thing that she wants the most she will end up pushing away or ruining for herself she might act in a way that he but here's the does thing not like here's the see i i agree that that's a possibility and a route that it, like a similar show or different show could go but does that at all contradict sayaka's emotional awareness of not even wanting to put herself in conversation to kissing Kami Joe were being held by him like she's already put herself out of the game like to even to do like and that's out of I think a, a like an aspect of care for Kami Joe and because of that care for Kami Joe I don't know if she would go forward with something that would be short in in verbal you know in the she, verbal sense it would be the second time that she would be doing something believing that it is for him and for his own good and for his happiness but it's not necessarily something he has explicitly said he wanted she doesn't know how he feels about her romantically yeah so if she goes on a belief that she invents herself on whether she has a chance or not she will be doing very much a similar thing to the wish for him and becoming a magical girl you could get a parallel of like he lashed out at her in the hospital, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I love the show so much. Me too. I, like, just keep giving me things that blow my mind technologically. While Homura is my favorite character currently, I am okay with her very little presence in this episode. Yeah. We have a similar lamp to, uh, The, the touch base? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weird place We're living in the speaker. future, like Madoka Magica's universe. Yeah. Mm. I think the last thing I wanted to say was just like that shot of realizing like Sayaka was home in bed with the soul gem was really fucking depressing. Like it like ma- like just her holding it and looking at it. I can't imagine what You're the fuck you feel at yourself. like. Yeah. The idea that if you were removed from this thing, if this thing was stolen from you, then you would basically cease to exist. Yep. And as Kyubei put it, well, it makes it easier to protect. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but does that not, to make something easier to protect in this way, does it not also make it easier to steal? But then again, your life is more protected than it was before. I don't know. (sighs) All right. That's all I have you. Yep. 
Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we hope to see you next time.